Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Studio One Pro 7 is out and has so many amazing new features to offer, but there's also a ton of smaller workflow improvements that you might have missed in the big launch announcement. So this video is dedicated to show you five of these new features. I can't wait to show them to you. So the very first one actually uses one of my own workflow techniques, which I'm actually a little bit proud of. I have my own video talking about these uh, workflows that I like to do. For example, this one would be about remixing audio loops with MIDI in a way that you just cannot do with audio editing. What do I mean by that? Well, here I have a drum loop. Sounds like this. Okay. And this is a really cool loop. It has a lot of punch to it, but it's always easy to just use these ready to go loops that others have thought of and use it in your music. But the problem with that is that many other thousands of producers will have the same idea and eventually this will lead to you inevitably sounding like everybody else. Instead, what I like to do is just slice it up a little bit and give that my own touch. And I can do that by using the impact. So impact is one of our virtual instruments that we have inside of Studio One. It's a drum sampler and you can simply drag and drop that to the next available song space to add it to a track. Okay. And what you can do then is you just select the audio loop that you have here and you drag that onto the first pad of impact. And before you let go, this is the important key part, you hold down shift. This will slice and spread the audio loop that you have currently selected across multiple pads and watch what happens at the same time. Let me just do that again so you can see that clearly. I'm just gonna redo this, okay? So I add the impact as a new instrument and as soon as I drag the audio loop onto the first pad while holding down shift, this is important, watch the instrument track. It adds MIDI notes, right? In a staircase form, which actually represents the audio loop one to one, but in MIDI. And you might wonder, yeah, but what is actually the point here? Why did you slice everything into MIDI just to have it sound the same as the audio loop? Well, now I can actually ditch the audio loop altogether. I'm just gonna remove the track for now. And um, now I can actually open up the notes right here. And you see that each of these cells is corresponding with a single drum element from this loop. And what I like to do then is to simply convert this into a pattern so that I have a step sequencer, which is so much fun. I just right click this MIDI part here and I go to instrument parts and then I go to convert part to pattern. And after I click that, I can open up again and you see now I have this step sequencer here, which is still playing the exact same audio loop. But now I can do things that are impossible to do in audio. For example, add a couple kick drums. I can take out things like that. You can also find one of my hi-hats, like for example here, and make 16 notes. And they play at a certain probability. Some of them have glitches. And you see immediately you're off to the races and you can create something truly unique, truly yours. And at any point, of course, convert that back into audio by simply hitting Command and B on a Mac or Control and B on Windows. Okay, so that was a pretty big feature that you might have missed in Studio One Pro 7. The next couple of features are smaller workflow improvements, but also very significant if you do this every day and it's gonna just speed up things a lot. For example, now you can actually edit all of these samples of impact, not by opening up the separate plugin window, which can take up a lot of space, especially on a laptop or something like that. Instead, you can just click here onto the pad controls and this opens up impact side by side. So you still see your beat and important, the notes that you're selecting here are immediately in focus, it can be 
edit it with all of Impact's parameters right from here. If you don't want to have this much space dedicated to this integrated editor window, you can simply resize it and notice how well this is scaling. So if I make this smaller, then I just see the pad that I've currently have selected, but I still have all of the controls to adjust that without having to open up the separate plugin window. To me, this is just fantastic. It is so much more ergonomic and has really streamlined my workflow more than you would think. Also, another workflow improvement that would be number three of the features that you might have missed, which I really love, is that if you want to replace a sample from this drum loop, let's say you want to have a different snare or something like that. Um, let me just search for one of my snares here in my folder. Maybe this would be a good choice. Then I can now, instead of opening up the impact, just drag and drop that straight onto my lanes here in the step sequencer. Right, and this will immediately replace the currently playing sample with the one that I'm dragging and it's already included and ready to go. So if you're adding more and more samples to your beat like that, at some point you find that you probably want to mix the snare and the kick differently than the hats and the cymbals and so forth. And this is easily achieved with multi outputs inside of Impact. So when we look at Impact for a moment here, you see this little one here at the bottom right corner of every pad. And this means that currently all of our snares, all of our cymbals and rim shots and kicks and so forth are routed to the same output, but I can simply click that and change that to any stereo or mono output that I want. And this is usually very good practice because it allows you to mix your snares, your uh, rim shots and so forth. Separately, you could low cut some of these higher frequency drum kit elements without also low cutting the kick drum, which is probably not what you want to do and so forth. So that is really, really great. But the more you do this, the more you realize that you're actually cluttering up your mixer console quite a bit. You notice that right now I already have five Impact XT channels here, even though it's just one instrument. And what if I don't want to see these at all times? Well, that's why it's so great that every multi output virtual instrument both third party, so it could also be Superior Drummer or something like that, as well as native Personas plugins, have this folder icon now, which you can easily click to show and hide all of the outputs of your multi-out instrument. And then you can really just treat it as one fader, both in your arrangement as well as your mixer console. And whenever you need to see these individual channels, you just click here and you can make your individual adjustments, add plugins just to channel number two and things like that. This was possible before, but only with a workaround that I've used for many, many years. And I'm so glad to say that I no longer need to do this. Now, in order not to break any of your old projects, this is not a uh, default behavior for older sessions. So when you open up your old projects, you will see that the instrument bus is not added right away. In that case, though, you can always right click and add the instrument bus this way. Okay. And um, should it be the case that you actually don't get the instrument bus added automatically as you're adding a multi output virtual instrument, then this might be because you don't have this set in the preferences yet. So to double check that go up to studio one and then preferences, and then you go to advanced console options, you should find the automatically create buses for multi out instruments checkbox, make sure that is ticked if you want this behavior. And this is going to save you a lot of time going forward. The fifth and final feature that you might have missed inside of Studio One Pro 7 is the looping feature and not just the looping feature, but the manipulation of start and end points and the instant inspiration that this can provide. So I've taken the liberty to use the drum loop from the start and add a little arrangement with that. That was super easy to do with splice. If you want to find out how I'm using splice in my day to day arrangements, especially since pro seven, definitely check out my video that is going to be linked right here. But yeah, I've added a few more harmonies like a melody and also lead architect, which is the lead synthesizer inside of studio One pro seven. It plays this little melody here goes pretty well together with everything else. Already quite happy with that, but it's always playing the same thing, right? I basically just took this uh, two bar thing and I just duplicated that by hitting the D key, but I would like a little bit more variation and this is where loops come into play. So 
to loop instead of just duplicate this instrument part. All I need to do is just right click and then tick the loop checkbox. And you see that it's immediately extending to the end point of my beat. And what I can do now, you see these little lines here indicating the end of my pattern. Okay, so if I just drag here from the bottom corner, you could see I'm now changing the end point and I can make this a lot faster. But my favorite thing is actually holding down Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows to change the start point instead. And this can have some tremendously interesting results as you can hear. And if you wonder how I like to use this now with the original pattern basically overwritten, well, I just hit the G key and I use the range tool to copy a little section from that. Like this, I really like um, the second half of this. And I'm gonna hit copy. And now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tricks inside of Studio One. Just copy with Command and C on a Mac or Control and C on Windows and then hit undo. Okay, hit undo a bunch of times until you're back at your original starting point. And the genius thing is that what I've copied is still in the clipboard. That is not overwritten by the undo. And so I can just paste that in here in the second half, right? And uh, already have a little variation in there. <laughs> So that's how I like to go back and forth with looping inside of Studio One Pro 7. And um, yeah, just editing the start and end points is something that gives you immediate gratification. Amazing to lift writer's block. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully some of these features were new to you. Enjoy Studio One Pro 7 and thank you so much for watching.